Picture this, you've fallen in love with some designer decor, but you can't quite afford it. What are you gonna do? DIY it with dollar store finds. Hey there, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com. Lately, I've been really loving the organic modern home decor style, plus I've been really loving the McGee collection of home decor. The only problem is it's out of my price range and is super expensive to ship up here to Canada. So when I visited Dollarama, that's our dollar store here in Canada, I found so many organic modern inspired pieces that I knew I could DIY to make some accents that are similar to the McGee and Co pieces. So let's get DIYing. I think these subdued botanical prints from McGee and Co are absolutely lovely. I love the organic look of them and I think they could work with so many different decor styles. I am heading to Dollarama and I'm gonna see what I can find here. I love these wooden frames. I love that they are 100% real wood. There's a couple different kinds here and they are all $2.50 each. I really liked these ones with the ridges, so I am going to grab two of these for this DIY. I also had this one on hand. It's adhesive jute tape, also from Dollarama, for a couple of dollars. I'm removing the backing out of the frame and just putting some plain white cardstock on top of that backing piece. I had these dried florals on hand, but you can use pretty much any faux or dried floral. Just make sure they're small in scale, just like this. Taking a few stems and arranging them, and then I'm cutting this burlap tape in half vertically so it's a little bit thinner, and taping the bottom of my arrangement, just like this. This is a super simple DIY. I think making a pair of these with a couple of different dried flowers looks so cute. I'm putting them up by the window and the door in my studio and they add such a lovely bit of texture. So the designer version of these are 325 US dollars each and I was able to make them for around $5 Canadian each. This Bronx oak pedestal is so pretty. I love the organic look, perfect for dinner parties. I found these round, tiny little planters at Dollarama for $2 each. I was hoping to find some wood spheres, couldn't find them, but I did find the little round planters, plus I found this planter dish. I'm starting out by removing the faux succulents from the little planters, and then I'm using an awl to take out everything inside the little planters. Just watch out if you're doing this, don't be too aggressive like I was on this one, and break the edge. But we're gonna paint these anyway, so it's gonna be okay. Now I'm taking some spray paint in this light brown color that I had on hand and spraying the front and the back sides of the tray and the little planters. Now I'm taking some super glue and I'm adding it to the top edge of the little ball feet and I'm putting each of these little round planters on each of the four sides of the tray. You could use whatever glue that you like. I had the super glue on hand and it seemed to work really well. You can also add some felt pads on the bottom if you're finding that the feet are a little bit uneven. Now that this is all set, I am going to add some wood-like texture to this piece. I'm taking this dark brown acrylic paint that I have on hand and I'm putting a little bit on a paper towel. Then I'm taking this brush, dabbing it in the paint, and then dabbing it again on the paper towel just to get a very small amount of paint on my brush, and I'm doing this technique called dry brushing. It's where you move the brush really quickly across your piece, just putting just a little bit of paint on it. I wanna make this kind of streaked, almost wood-like texture, and I'm really loving how this is turning out. You could also coat this with a food protective sealant. I'm going to leave it as is and just make sure there's no food sitting directly on my pedestal. I love the texture of this bowl and it's so cute on a table or on a sideboard and the little dessert plate fits perfectly inside. So the designer footed pedestal was $120 US and I was able to make this for $11 Canadian. 
This wreath is so classic and gorgeous, and I feel like I could make something very similar with Dollarama finds. They always have a lot of faux florals. They have a lot of faux ferns right now, and then some other greenery too. So I'm gonna grab some of the faux ferns. They are $2.50 for a bundle. I like them, they're okay, but I actually like these little faux greenery pieces better. To me, they look a little bit more realistic, so I'm gonna grab some of these as well. This grapevine wreath was on hand. I think it was around $8 from Michael, so I will add it into the final cost of this project. I'm taking some wire cutters and cutting each of the individual pieces of that faux greenery off. Now, I think the trick to making faux greenery, especially if it's on the cheaper side, to make that faux greenery look more realistic is really bend those pieces. So for these ferns especially, just bending them back and forth, almost like a gentle accordion style, really makes them look so much better. I'm also bending the stem down, taking my glue gun and just putting a little dab of glue at the stem and pushing that into the grapevine wreath. Grapevine wreath bases are my preferred bases for wreaths because they have that natural organic look and you can push faux greens right into them for a really nice look. Plus, if you're only adding a little bit of hot glue, you can reuse these wreath bases year after year, season after season, and reuse all your greens later too. I'm just kind of overlapping all of these ferns and pointing them the same way all around the wreath perimeter. Now that the wreath is completely full of those faux ferns, I'm taking these other ones and just placing them randomly throughout the wreath, just making sure that they are in the same direction as the ferns. I love how these add a little bit more texture. They're a slightly different green, so they really add to the fullness and the more high-end look for this wreath. Now, if you're still finding that there's some holes to fill, just take more of the ferns and just glue gun them in place. This one surprised me. It turned out so well, and I love how it looks on the front door. Great for any season. So the designer wreath was $118 US, and I was able to make mine for around $23 Canadian. These crochet pot holders are so cute. I think they would be fantastic in any sort of kitchen, and I wanna try to crochet them. At Dollarama, you can find lots of different string. I found this cotton rope for $1.50 a pack and I bought four of these. And then I also grabbed these leather insoles to see if I could turn them into the little strap that goes on the pot holder. Now, if you're not familiar with crochet, I will leave a link in the description box below for a really good tutorial you can follow. I'm first making a slip knot and then I'm taking this large crochet hook, putting it through the slip knot and then pulling through my first chain of my crochet chain. I'm gonna make 20 of these. Now that I'm at the end of the chain, I'm gonna do what's called a single crochet. So I'm placing my hook through the last chain that I made, pulling some string through, and then pulling some string through again through both of those loops. That's called a single crochet. I'm gonna do this all the way back down the chain that I created. This is probably the hardest part of this whole DIY because I find that usually trying to crochet through your chain is a little bit tricky, but after this row, it's gonna get so much easier. Once you have 19 single crochets, you're going to chain one, just like I'm doing here, turn your piece around, and then you're gonna single crochet through all of the first single crochets you did, but crochet through the back chain part like I'm doing here. This is gonna create a ridge so that it's going to give your pot holder lots of that delicious texture. This is such a fun project to do if you wanna just kick back and relax, and even if you're new at crochet. 
Okay, and I'm gonna admit, I didn't save a lot of money with this DIY because I did have to use four packs of this string. Plus it did take a long time, but it was just so cool I had to share it with you and I do love how it turned out in the end. If you need to add another pack of string to your pot holder, I just add mine like this, where I bring in the new string and kind of add it into my crochet stitch and then I just tie it in the back with a square knot. Once I'm finished my work, I'm just weaving all the ends through my piece and then trimming them off. Let's see if we can make a leather strap from the leather insoles. What I ended up doing is I just kind of stuck them together and then I cut them down the middle vertically and I'm actually able to pull off that gel part on the back. It's a little bit tricky, but you kind of get your fingers in there after you cut it and it's totally doable. And after you remove that gel piece from the insole, you have this beautiful supple piece of leather and I'm gonna use all of the parts of these insoles for lots of different crafts. I just trimmed one down to make it about the same length and width of the strap and I'm using some crazy glue to attach it to the corner of my crochet pot holder. You could also use a brad or you could also use a stamp for this. I'm just trying to use what I have on hand. This is actually really strong and I love how this pot holder turned out. Again, I didn't save a ton of money with it, but it was a really fun and relaxing DIY and I think it turned out great. So theirs was about $9.33 each and mine was about $10 Canadian. So with the exchange rate, I did save a little bit. This vintage green floral pillow is so beautiful. I love that it looks like it's made from a vintage scarf. I found this $4 tablecloth at Dollarama and it actually does have a really pretty silky texture plus the pattern I thought was so perfect. I'm using a pillow insert I have on hand that's about 8 inches tall by 16 inches wide. You can find these for around $6 at Ikea and then I'm cutting out a rectangle from my tablecloth from Dollarama that's about 1 inch wider and 1 inch taller than my pillow form. I'm using the worst, most dullest scissors in the world. If you have better scissors than me, this is going to go a lot faster. After I cut out my front piece, I'm going to cut out two back pieces because I'm creating an envelope style pillow. So essentially you want the back pieces to be about half the width of the front piece plus about two inches because you do want them to overlap. I'm just making sure to line up the finished edge of my tablecloth with the inside little edges of my pillow. So I'm placing the front down like this and then I'm placing both of those back pieces over top, right sides together, making sure that I have that overlap in the center. I'm pinning everything in place and then I'm going to take this to my sewing machine, sew around the entire perimeter of this pillow with a half inch seam allowance. If you don't want to use a sewing machine, you could also use fabric glue for this as well, just making sure that you have about a half inch salvage all the way around, or you could even use some hot glue made for fabric. Now I'm clipping all the corners so I don't have lots of bulk there and turning my pillow cover right side out. This is a really easy way to make a pillow cover that doesn't require any sort of snaps or zippers. And this is a style that you have been asking me to do for quite some time. Now I'm just taking my Cricut Easy Press because that's what I have and ironing everything and placing my pillow insert inside. This was such an easy DIY and I love this fabric. I'm definitely gonna use the rest of the tablecloth for other DIYs and I think it would look great from summer right into fall. You could also make something that would be even more beautiful with an actual vintage scarf from the thrift store. So the designer pillow was $208 US and mine was right around $10 Canadian. 
Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed these DIYs. Let me know down in those comments below which of these was your favorite. My personal favorite was the footed pedestal. I think it turned out so fantastically. I love how I was able to make it look cohesive with the paint, and I actually really like the faux wood grain texture that I achieved. If you love DIY and decor ideas on a budget, I'm gonna leave some more videos for you to watch next right up here.